This is a very rare and quite extraordinarily unique piece of film that was unearthed by the researchers during the making of the program. That is an American C-47 Skytrain, better known as the Douglas Dakota, and these are American paratroopers in training in Britain for D-Day. But these are not just any paratroopers, these are pathfinders. It was the job of the pathfinders of each of the airborne divisions to drop first about an hour before the main body of the paratroopers and to mark out the drop zones. It was extremely dangerous work. They were dropping into hostile territory at night and alone. And these are the aircraft that carried them. The C-47s marked with the black and white invasion stripes, which were painted onto all aircraft just before D-Day as a means of recognition. And this is the very first aircraft to lead the American Air Armada, number 293098. This is the aircraft flown by Lieutenant Colonel Joel Crouch, commanding the 9th Troop Carrier Command Pathfinder Group. And this is the aircraft that will lead the two American airborne divisions into action on D-Day. And this is Lieutenant Colonel Crouch together with the crew of his aircraft. And if you look behind them, you can see the invasion stripes painted on the aircraft. And they've actually put masking around parts of the aircraft that they don't want damaged by paint. Uh, that paint is probably still drying as this film is being taken. And that is an indication of just how immediate and real this film is. Handshakes all round, preparations for going into action. It's the job of Lieutenant Colonel Crouch and his men to fly the Pathfinders on a difficult route uh, round to the west of Normandy and then come in over their targets in order to release the Pathfinders as accurately as possible down onto the drop zones. If the Pathfinders get a good drop, they will be able to mark the drop zones clearly for the rest of the arriving troops. And they will be doing this flying through bad weather and for the last few minutes through German anti-aircraft fire. And according to Lieutenant Colonel Crouch's watch, it is through that door that at 12 minutes past midnight on Tuesday, the 6th of June, 1944, the commander of the 101st Airborne Division's Pathfinders, Captain Frank Lilliman, will launch himself to begin the invasion of Normandy. And this is Lieutenant Colonel Crouch, taken with Captain Lilliman on his left as we look at it, and the lieutenant on his right displays very prominently the AA, the All-American Division, her 82nd Airborne Division flash, showing he commands the Pathfinders of that division. And it's a bit hard to tell from all the camouflage cream, but that appears to be Captain Lilliman with the 101st Screaming Eagle flash and also the American flag. This is H hour minus one, nine o'clock in the evening, British double summer time on the 5th of June. This is Captain Lilliman's Pathfinders waiting to go into action and Lieutenant Colonel Crouch's crew waiting to take them. It's going to be a difficult flight of just over two hours duration. They have to fly as accurately as possible the final stages through bad weather and heavy cloud to get the men to their drop zones. Time for a last handshake, a last cigarette. All the units of Troop Carrier Command received unit citations for their bravery in the Normandy airborne drops. Coming up to the actual moment, extraordinary to have this on film. 9.54 p.m. June the 5th, Lieutenant Colonel Crouch's aircraft takes off, with the others following him. 20 minutes to get into formation, and then next stop, France. <laughs> 